And good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Monday. It is November the 14th, and you are watching Common Sense America. I am Eden Hill, and I am so glad to be here with you. It, is, it has been a wonderful weekend to come together, to be with family, to be with friends this weekend. And I tell you what, we sat down and we decorated our home for the holidays. We got to be with friends and family, and it's so good to be here with you. I wanted to let you know that this morning and for this week, we have some amazing, amazing interviews, brand new interviews coming straight to you here from Common Sense America. We seek to bring you truth. We, we seek to bring you God, family, country, and we're going to be doing a lot of human interest stories for you this week as we head into the Christmas and Thanksgiving seasons. Many of you posted on my social channels, and I'm so thankful for all of your comments and your interest and your excitement for everything that we are doing here at Common Sense America. And this morning, we're going to talk about a very powerful topic, and that topic is homelessness. We, as a nation, face a greater impact of homelessness that is in our nation's backyard. And so this morning, we're going to be talking with the president of the Bowery Mission, James Winans. James Winans is based in New York City, and the Bowery Mission is the oldest homeless rescue mission in the United States based in New York City. I know for us, here in Eastern North Carolina, we are looking at uh, the migrants that are being dropped off here. We are looking at new homeless communities that are popping up in the Eastern North Carolina area. And I think at the forefront of what we have in front of us, we need to be talking about homeless issues and how we can better serve the greater community. How can we better serve through our churches? How can we better serve through supporting organizations, local organizations that will focus on the homeless population, feeding, clothing, providing shelter, and providing a hope in the future for the homeless community? So we are going to be talking with James Winans at the top at 9.05 a.m. Eastern, he's going to be joining us. I'm looking forward to having him here from the Bowery Mission. He is the president, and I had the honor to work at the Bowery Mission from 2008 to 2010, serving as the public relations director and also serving on the Don't Walk By campaign. So the Bowery Mission is very close to my heart. They are getting ready for their Thanksgiving, which is the biggest event of the year for the Bowery Mission, where they serve many thousands of homeless people from all five boroughs in New York City. And so we're going to be talking with them about their needs, what we can do, whether we are in Pennsylvania, whether we are in Florida, or whether we are there right there in New York City. How can we get involved and help with serving the least of these? And so James is going to be breaking down the numbers, how many meals they serve, how many volunteers they still need, and also talking about the fact that, I don't know if you knew this, but November is National Homelessness Month. It was declared in 2007. So November is National Homelessness Month. Also, something else I wanted to share with you, 70,000 New Yorkers are currently facing homelessness, and that was on the Bowery Mission's Twitter account. I want to encourage you to go to the Bowery Mission. It's BoweryMission.org. B-O-W-E-R-Y mission.org. Check out their website, their webpage, get involved, see what they have going on. I know that they have phenomenal events throughout the year. They have a men's program, they have a women's program, and they have a kids program, and they have expanded leaps and bounds since I was with them. And so we're going to hear a little bit about what they are doing in preparation for Thanksgiving, but also as they go out throughout the year with all of the um, migrants coming to New York City. W. Um, Pix 11 in New York City uh, interviewed the Bowery Mission talking about just the influx and how they are handling it. So we'll talk a little bit about that this morning as well. Also, I wanted to let you know that the Bowery Mission this year is celebrating 150 years of service of shelter, of safety and stability to New York City. And that is quite a celebration and something to be recognized and something to really think about. 
And so I really wanted to raise that awareness for you um, as we are headed into the cold, the winter, the winter months, the seasons that it is more difficult, especially um, for the homeless in New York City, but also thinking about it for here, here in Eastern North Carolina. I told you the story of my husband and how he was um, helping a modern day Lazarus is what he called them. And, you know, we really um, need to be more alert and more in tune to what is happening in our backyards. And I say that all the time, and I'm, I know I'm probably beating a dead horse, but that is very important for all of those who are tuning in on the YouTube channel, on LinkedIn, all the social media channels. Thank you for supporting Common Sense America. Thank you for supporting the three months of being on air. And thank you for your support on just ex helping me expose truth and bring truth to you every morning, weekdays at 9 a.m. I'm really grateful to be able to do that. For all of you who are tuning in, I would love your comments. If you have comments, suggestions, guest inquiries, and guest suggestions, please send them our way. We would love to have you uh, have your suggestions, your ideas. We are bringing a lot of new faces to the show, and I'm excited to share those with you. We're going to be doing everything from Christmas topics to kids books for Christmas to family books and things of that nature. So we have a lot and a lot of people from all over the country joining Common Sense America. And so we're grateful for your support. We're grateful for all that you have done for our show. And we're grateful for what we can bring to you. On that note, I'm honored to bring over to the show James Winans. He is the president of the Bowery Mission in New York City. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Eden. It's been a long time. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. You look fabulous. How are things going in New York getting ready for Thanksgiving? Well, this is a big, big couple of weeks for the Bowery Mission. We've been celebrating Thanksgiving here in New York since the 1870s. Um, and of course, the last couple of years have been extraordinarily disrupted. We're looking forward to something a little bit more normal here in 2022. Oh, good. Well, I, I opened up Common Sense America with a little history about the Bowery Mission, but I would love for you to share. Uh, you're celebrating 150 years this year. I would love for you to share some of your story. I know you've been at the Bowery Mission for such a long time and just what the Bowery has really meant to you over the years and and uh, just what the Bowery stands for. It's such a beacon of light. We, we are celebrating 150 years this year. Um, just last month, actually, was 150 years since Jerry and Maria McCauley began what was called the Helping Hand on Water Street. Um, and that organization grew over time to become New York City Rescue Mission. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry and Maria McCauley also had a conversation not too many years in with, Al um, with Albert and Ellen Rullison. Um, and they began what was known as the Bowery Mission. Now, five years ago, those two organizations have joined together under the Bowery Mission name. Um, and very true to our founding, you know, Jerry and Maria McCauley were um, folks who had lived lives of crime here in New York City. Mm -hmm. Jerry was known as the River Thief. He um, boarded boats in the East River at night and, and stole the goods on the boats and then sold them during the day. Um, and he uh, ended up in uh, Sing Sing Prison upstate uh, mm -hmm. for his crimes and heard one day the testimony of somebody he knew from the streets who shared how he had converted to a life of Christian faith. And Jerry mm -hmm. thought, well, if he, if it, the, the man's name was actually Awful, uh, if Awful can convert <laughs> to uh, this, this faith-filled life of Christianity, I believe I can as well. And so mm -hmm. that, that was a turning point for Jerry. He, um, he met Maria. Maria had been actually uh, uh, working as a prostitute on the streets of New York. Mm -hmm. she, she had also similar, similarly experienced a conversion. They got married and, and said, what, what is it that we can do for New Yorkers who are in the situation that mm -hmm. we had once been in? How can we help? Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, you know, that was in the 1870s. That was our founding. I first came to the Bowery Mission in 1999 as a volunteer 23 years ago. Yeah. Um, and I spent a summer uh, working in one of our men's residential programs. And, mm -hmm. and just like the story I just told you, it was those stories of men who had experienced homelessness on the streets, who anybody who had seen them would have 
uh, you know, considered them um, beyond repair, unredeemable, um, but they had come to the Bowery Mission and had seen their lives transformed. And so, mm -hmm. um, so, but they didn't just take that blessing for themselves and run with it. Yeah. Um, they actually said, what is it that I can do to give back? What is it that I can do Mm -hmm. to serve and help other people out of the situation mm -hmm. uh, that I found myself in. And so it was it was those men who were serving on staff here at the Bowery Mission mm -hmm. in 1999 who really changed my heart for what is possible in the life of somebody experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. I was I was reading a lot of the do, different news reports coming out, but I did not realize that since 2007, November is known as National Homelessness Month. And um, I was looking at your Twitter feed and realizing that. So I was sharing that. And then I also noticed that is it are the numbers correct that there are 70,000 New Yorkers currently facing homelessness or is the number higher now since that time period? I noticed that was back in October. Yeah, there are at least 70,000 New Yorkers experiencing homelessness in New York, either living in you know municipal shelters, um, private residential facilities like the Bowery Mission or out on the streets and in the subways of New York. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe that number is rising. Uh, and in fact, we are in New York, have many new arrivals in the city of New York um, who, uh, who are seeking services, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, often coming up from our, our southern border, often originating in places like Venezuela. Um, and we're seeing those folks arrive in New York City as well. Um, uh, actually transitioning through the Bowery Mission very quickly into uh, okay. independent housing and into the workplace. So that's that's encouraging. But um, but the numbers are increasing. And um, I think we have this awareness month in November because uh, we're all a little bit more aware as the temperatures drop, mm -hmm. um, how mm -hmm. dangerous it is to be out on the streets unhoused in a place like New York City. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's exact. I was going to ask you about those who are being dropped off. I, I noticed your interview on PIX11 and how you talked about just the increase in seeing so many of the migrants coming here from the southern border. And are you finding, is it mostly, is it families or is it a little bit of both? Is it more men? Is it more women? Or is it a combination that you're finding? Yeah, I think because of the way that we are set up at the Bowery Mission, we would tend not to see uh, an intact family. I don't know that, uh, you know, I don't know the demographic makeup actually of, you know, those who those who are arriving uh, mm -hmm. precisely. But but the folks that we have seen have tended to be uh, men who are here um, yeah. uh, in New York alone right now. Mm -hmm. I was I was sharing earlier uh, with our audience, and I've been sharing with them over the recent weeks, and this is where I want to leave with you in the next question. Being here in eastern North Carolina and being here down south, we are seeing similar. We're seeing busloads being dropped off. They were just talking about it happening in Philadelphia and us being here in eastern North Carolina. We're by Camp Lejeune. We're by all of your military bases. But my husband in recent weeks befriended a homeless man who was just dropped off here. And we were looking to figure out where we could place him and how we could help him. And what this area is not used to that. It's mostly retirees. It's mostly uh, transplants coming from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And, you know, we have a couple missions here, but the capacity of, you know, having uh, been with you guys in New York and being in, in the city and working at the Bowery Mission, um, you know, I, I, I take that and I take the toolkit and I say, okay, what can we do now? How can we help these people? And my question to you is this, as we are here and uh, in other states, every state now is a border state in many senses. And, you know, uh, as you or we're not aware of this, I, I ran for state house earlier this year and I met with a lot of the sheriffs and they said every state now, and especially North Carolina, it is a border state. So as we are looking at that, what are some tools that you could share with my audience as just this very simple tools as we are continuing to you know, start to see things? I know there's a couple tent communities that are just miles down the road. What are we what can we as as believers, as those who who want to give back to the community, as those who want to serve? What are some of your just quick tips that you would say to somebody that doesn't live in New York, but still would like to help? I think, you know, I think one of the uh, maybe one of the traps that we fall into um, in, in our compassion 
um, is we say to ourselves, what, what can I as one person do to mm -hmm. help? Mm -hmm. um, and so often that question leads us into places of despair or giving up, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because, um, you know, the reality is we, we are limit. We, we are people with limits, right? We, right. we have limits to what we can do as one person. And so I just encourage everybody to, to seek out places of uh, like-minded community, mm -hmm. right? Maybe, maybe it's your, uh, your church or house of worship where, um, where others, you know, finding those other people who care and then finding the finding the folks who have been in your community doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. um, you know, and maybe that maybe your community does have a have a rescue mission like the Bowery Mission. Mm -hmm. um, there are 300 of those across the country, maybe uh, in a suburban community. You have a family promise network mm -hmm. uh, that you can connect with. There's over 200 of those across the country. Okay. Uh, but find these places where um, people have banded together to mm -hmm. to to welcome and help neighbors in need. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and then bring all of your skills and talents and gifts into mm -hmm. that community right mm -hmm. but 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 uh but don't do this alone um and then and then you know i'm sure lots and lots of your listeners are uh, you know chasing children around the house or running uh running enterprises during the day or you know, <laughs> uh, you know yeah. like like there's 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 lots to keep us busy um and uh just be aware that that uh that there are many um, effective solutions out there, effective organizations out there who are not actually accepting uh, funding from the U.S. government or mm -hmm. from the state, state or local government, like right. the Bowery Mission. We are relying 100% on private donations to do the work that we're doing. Um, and so being financially generous with organizations mm -hmm. like ours who you know, have community-based, faith-based solutions mm -hmm. who are not relying on government support um, by by going and making a gift uh, to 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 an organization that's serving in your local community uh, is something I highly encourage everybody to consider. No, thank you for that. Uh, what I love about the Bowery Mission, looking at you know what you've updated on the website, providing shelter, providing safety, providing stability for the people of New York, for the homeless of New York City. I would love to talk about your Thanksgiving prep. And, you know, it is one of the biggest things that the Bowery Mission puts on every year. And I absolutely loved being a part of it then. And I still, from a distance, love wanting to, you know, be able to support every, any way we can. Like you said, everything is private donations. So talk to us about the Thanksgiving prep. Talk to us about all the meals, all the volunteers, and what is that looking like as we head? Because I know you are very busy. And I know that, um, you know, the support that New York City gives is phenomenal, but I know your support comes in from all over the place. So talk to us about that, kind of educate my audience on all the amazing meals and just the setup that goes into it. And yeah, the Bowery Mission is is certainly uh, New York City's longest running Thanksgiving tradition and, and perhaps one of the longest running in the country. Um, and, you know, the Bowery Mission serves a lot of meals every single day. We say here that it all begins with a meal, that the the meal is that immediate, tangible uh, sign of God's love that, uh, that 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 often encourages somebody to take a step beyond homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much about the meal as it is about the relationship yeah. and building trust to, to to come out of that situation of homelessness. Um, and on Thanksgiving Day, we just uh, we just take that um, that daily act of service and grow it exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that no one is alone on this holiday, this holiday, which is so much about gathering around a family table. Mm -hmm. uh, for those without family, we're creating that family table at the Bowery Mission. Um, and so, so we, you know, I mean, over the course of this holiday season, November and December, we're serving 50,000 meals. Uh, on Thanksgiving Day alone, we're expecting 1,000 people to sit down uh -huh. at the Bowery Mission um, Chapel and enjoy uh, you know, enjoy food, um, uh, a, a full turkey dinner with all the all the trimmings. Um, enjoy some music. Enjoy some encouraging words um, in a decorated space that's mm -hmm. warm and welcoming and off the streets. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're just we're expecting to serve a thousand people that day. Today, we have three hundred turkeys uh, rolling up in front of the Bowery <laughs> campus. We're going to be preparing two hundred turkeys over the course of the next week and a half, um, and then distributing the remaining 100 turkeys uh, to families in communities that we serve through our children's program. 
Um, Wednesday, the potatoes arrived, 2,500 <laughs> pounds of potatoes that we are going to prepare from scratch. This is not potatoes out of a box. This is potatoes that are peeled and mashed and prepared. Um, and we have the, the team's already worked ahead on, mm -hmm. uh, they tell me, 740 pounds of apple chutney. That's a lot of apples. Oh, wow. Um, and a similar amount of succotash. And uh, we're making 600 pounds of stuffing from scratch. 2000 pieces of cornbread. So, um, so we are, we are getting ready for the big day, Thanksgiving day. Um, and again, this is all privately funded. And so people are yeah. going to our website, bowery.org mm -hmm. um, and making their donations there to, to make sure this is all funded. Um, and then on the day of uh, Thanksgiving, um, I'm looking at our latest count here. We've, we have 350 volunteers signed up to, to oh, come in and fabulous. serve those thousand meals. So, Okay. Um, so we're excited about having that group of people here. Let me ask you, are you still getting, I remember all those years that there was such an Amish and Mennonite community involvement with the Bowery Mission from Pennsylvania. So are you still getting a lot of their um, volunteers and services and are they give, are they providing a lot of the food and where is all your food coming from? That's right. We, um, the Bowery Mission has an incredible 70 year story now of, uh, generosity from the Mennonite and Amish communities, primarily, you know, centered in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, and these are folks who, you know, run farms and, and uh, also do, you know, do food processing activities out in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And so, you know, most of the eggs that are served here at the Bowery Mission, most of the sugar that's, in, you know, uh, included in our baked goods, um, uh, you know, much of our produce uh, and, and, and a lot of our protein actually is, is uh, coming to us from the Mennonite and Amish communities. And so, mm -hmm. um, so that's an exciting uh, uh, source of, of, uh, of food for the Bowery Mission that really allows us to stretch every donor's dollar yes. um, and make sure that we can uh, off prepare foods as, as inexpensively as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, have, then we have many sources right here in the city. Um, Whole Foods Market actually is a, is a major contributor of food mm -hmm. to the Bowery Mission. Mm -hmm. um, has been for a decade now, uh, you know, offering us the, the the salad greens as they come off the shelf, and and mm -hmm. and the and the day old breads and all those sorts of things that mm -hmm. um, that uh, that that we uh, put into our daily meals. Mm -hmm. Also, talk to me about one story over the years. You've been there for so long, but what is one story that just has really impacted you? And the second part to that question is, as you get up every morning, raising your family and living in the city, what has really impacted you to say, okay, here we go again. You know, we are all about serving this amazing community, the very least of these. What has really impacted you in your journey? No, you asked me to tell one story, and I'll probably tell at least three. Um, <laughs> That's great. All three. I love them. I love so, these stories. But, you know, I recently was thinking about uh, a, a person that we served maybe a decade ago now. Um, and uh, his name is Daheim. And um, uh, he had come to the city uh, from Morocco, you know, as, as so many people do come, come to New York City chasing a dream. He was working in the restaurant industry. Um, and was working in a restaurant that was actually uh, shut down after 9/11, uh, when the when the economy downtown was so so devastated by that terrorist attack. Um, and he found himself without work uh, in in 2002, and entered into the New York City public shelter system. Um, here's somebody who was in the city alone by himself. Um, uh, you know, back in the days when a when an international phone call was a bit of an ordeal, right? And yeah. um, and he said to me, James, nobody knew where I was, and I didn't know where I was um, in in the New York City shelter system. And so, in a way, Dahim was was completely lost at that point. Um, he, uh, one of our outreach workers, came to that shelter, um, let people know about the opportunity for. Uh, a men's recovery program at the Bowery Mission. He decided to take the risk and, mm -hmm. and enter into the program. Um, there were some things going on in his life that, that he was able to deal with in that program. Um, and so, uh, you know, I saw to him the day that he uh, actually had made the decision to return to his family out of the country back in Morocco. 
Um, and we were able to get him to the airport and get him on a plane. And then later uh, the next day, his counselor received a phone call and could hear his family celebrating in the background as their lost son had returned home. Um, and you know, it's just a just a, a reminder to me that no one no one is lost to God, um, and and the Bowery Mission can be that place um, where people know that they are not lost. Um, we we celebrated graduation earlier this year. Um, every year we celebrate those who've completed our residential program, who are connected to faith and community, and have overcome their homelessness and addiction, and are prepared to. And, and have re-entered the workforce in independent housing. And we celebrate those incredible stories every year. Yes. Um, and last year we had a, a graduate named Daryl who said, um, he was reflecting on his time being homeless in New York. And he said, the Bowery Mission was the place where they knew my name and mm -hmm. they remembered me every single day. And I didn't have another place like that in the world. Mm -hmm. And so the Bowery Mission wants to be that place, that place where people's names and stories and hopes and dreams and desires are known and mm -hmm. cared for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one other story I'd love to share is, is the story of James Macklin, too. I mean, that's a phenomenal story. I'll let you tell it if you want. I mean, I don't know if I would do it justice, but always riding the subways with him, going to serve, you know, and hearing his stories, but how he he was, a, you know, a businessman, a leading businessman, and then ended up on you know the subways and ended up becoming very homeless and then had this whole life transformation because of the bowery mission and you know i would love to have him on if he wants to come on and and then sing a couple tunes with me too i'd love that um but you know that story those stories of impact really just you guys are a beacon of light to the city itself, but also as you guys are the oldest, you know, homeless rescue mission now in the United States, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I absolutely love the fact that you guys have continued through all the downturns in the economy. You continue, God has continued to provide, 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 and really show that. And that's what I absolutely love about the Bowery Mission. Let me ask you this, for all of those who are tuning in, audiences nationwide, audiences you know, from all over the place who are coming in to support this show, how can they get involved, even if they are just going to New York for the weekend, uh, you know, or if they are going to be in the city, but it's not for Thanksgiving? What are ways people can get involved? Obviously, you can go on online and donate, but what are other ways that people could get involved if they want to be more active with the Bowery Mission? Yeah, well, thank you for asking that. It's certainly, if, if someone, one of your listeners is coming to New York City, uh, yeah. we'd encourage them to come come and see. I mean, this is, uh, you know, we believe a very biblical invitation to, you know, come and see what is happening at the Bowery Mission. And, and, and in a way, don't take our word for it, right? To, to determine for yourself what you see and whether or not it's something that... Um, You'd like to to support and get involved in so mm -hmm. so you're welcome here in new york city if you're if you're coming in for a broadway show or something like that to see a little bit of you know another side of of new york city mm -hmm. um and i know even many of your listeners are, are people of faith um yes and um and so you know the bowery mission can certainly use your prayers all mm -hmm. the time um and in fact that may be the most important thing um, yes. that you can do is to intercede on behalf of the work that we're doing in the Bowery Mission, it's it's extraordinarily difficult right now. I'll, 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 I'll uh, you know, I'll, I'll just just to share. I mean, what we are seeing at the at the the, the you know the famous red doors of the Bowery Mission yes. um, as people come in is something different than we've seen. I'd say even three or five years ago, um, in terms of the you know, the level of life controlling drug addiction that that is happening mm. in our in our city, um, our staff. Uh, over the last year have literally been saving lives every month um, through, uh, you know, utilizing overdose uh, reversal drugs and CPR. And, mm. and, um, and, you know, we're just we're just seeing a lot of uh, trouble around drugs. We're seeing a lot of uh, high needs, mental illness. I was going to um, ask you about as that. As well. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, I think we're, we're all experiencing an in increased level of anxiety in, in our yeah in our nation um yes. and when you're unhoused that is uh, an extraordinary burden to to bear and it leads to some very dangerous um uh dangerous for yourself dangerous for others behavior at times and so um 
so we just we we continue to need need uh, the prayers of of your listeners as we um, you know as we as we do battle on several fronts here in New York City. Yes, yeah, I was going to bring up the mental health aspect because that is it's such an epidemic. You know, even since the COVID and the isolation techniques, I see it here on the battlefront with regards to our military, with our active duty, with our retirees, with our veterans, you know, that isolation piece and everything that happened just, and also in our, in our teens as well, the next generation, I'm seeing it there as well. So it's just this, this threaded mental health piece that is, and the, and the teen suicides, I work with a local school here. It's a homeschooling pod. And, you know, she is an educator and a director of it, and she's seeing such a high rate in teen suicide. And so that is something that we will put at the very forefront of praying for the Bowery Mission for sure. I can't imagine, um, you know, what you guys are seeing even at this point, like you said, in the past three to five, seven, you know, seven years or et cetera, et cetera. Let me ask you something on a final note before I let you go, because I know you got to go work on some turkeys um, on a lighter note. Uh, talk to me about, um, if you can, Don't Walk By, um, and how is that, is that still running, and are you, will you be in the Bowery Mission, all the partners transitioning into Don't Walk By for the winter months? Um, how is that looking on the forefront as well? Yeah, let me first pick up on your thread about, you know, the next generation, yeah, and yeah, um, just, just let your listeners know that, you know, the Bowery Mission is well known in New York City and, and around the country for our work with adults who are homeless. Um, the Bowery Mission, uh, almost as long as we've been doing that, has been working with, uh, you know, next generation children and families um, to do a preventative work um, and to help um, ha help families support children in ways that the children will never end up homeless. You know, when, when a child grows up, we want them to come to the Bowery Mission as a volunteer, um, not as somebody, uh, you know, in desperate need of our services. And so, so we do provide after school programs. We call them city camps um in uh in neighborhoods here in new york city and then the capstone experience of that year of city camp is actually going out to our summer camp in the pocono region of pennsylvania um called montlon camp montlon camp has yes. uh, been been running for nearly 130 years and is often children's first you know real um loving uh, and nature-filled experience outside of the city where they <laughs> they they see they see the beauty of creation and hear about god's love for them so Yes. Um, and as far as uh, don't walk by, um, this is a this is an initiative that um, uh, the Bowery Mission partners with the Salvation Army, uh, City Relief, and Hope for New York mm -hmm. to train volunteer teams uh, in homeless outreach uh, to kind of demystify uh, that experience of yeah. uh, encountering a neighbor on the street without a home. How do you do that in a way that is loving and caring and purposeful and fruitful? Um, and then we send folks out into every single block of the city of Manhattan over the course of a month. We, we manage to cover all of the neighborhoods of Manhattan um, and invite people back for uh, certainly a warm meal first, but also, um, you know, medical attention if needed um, and the ability to connect into uh, different organizations that might have um, potential solutions to what, what uh, our neighbors are facing on the streets. And so... So we will be doing that again uh, okay. here in the month, months of February and March uh, okay. 2023. And we're looking forward to, to serving the city in that way again. Oh, well, wonderful. Well, James Winans, I am so grateful for your time. Thank you for being here. He is the president of the Bowery Mission. Thank you for joining Common Sense America this morning. As soon as the show ends, I'm going to be promoting it all over um, social media, getting it um, out there, making sure we get people to donate and pray and to get involved. And we look forward to hearing updates. I would love to hear updates on the women's program. We didn't even touch on upon that yet, but I would love to have um, whoever you'd like to come back and just talk about the mental health piece and the kids and everything of those natures. We, the audience here is such a support of the next generation, a faith audience specifically, and really just focused on wanting to serve and give back. So you guys are kicking off what is going to be a very special two months here at Common Sense America. So thank you so much, James. Thank you, Eden. And I encourage anybody listening to, to go to Bowery.org and learn more. Um, and again, if you're in New York City, uh, you're welcome at the Bowery Missions. So we look forward to seeing you. Thank oh, you, Eden. Thank you, James. Take care. Many blessings to you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. And for all those who are tuning in, this is Common Sense.